Hello, so it's Michael here, and today I thought I would go ahead and do something a little bit different. And that's going to be going over the level blueprint a little bit. Now, just for context, I am currently in the first person template map. Uh, there's no particular reason for this, it just happens to be what I've loaded for this particular video. Okay, so let's get started. Now, in terms of the level blueprint, if you're wanting to access it, you can do so through the little button up here. So you click on that and there's an option for level blueprint. And when you do that, it'll look just like any other blueprint. Now, the thing about the level blueprint, and it's kind of a feature that tends to attract quite a lot of new people to Unreal, and that's the ability to be able to just reference anything in the level. So what I mean by this is, if for example, I have this gun selected here, is in the level so the, the rifle in the level blueprint I can right click and there's an option to create a reference to that specific weapon just like that which means if I was to go ahead and do on begin play and we'll start a quick well, we'll start a quick short delay on that so uh, two seconds I can then come in and just destroy the actor really easily just like that. So in two seconds, you know, the gun's destroyed. Now, whilst that in itself would seem really useful, the level blueprint kind of has a bit of a flaw. Well, I say a flaw, a limitation is probably a, a better description for it. Uh, and that limitation is that the communication with the level blueprint is very much one way. And by that, uh, what I mean is that you can't really communicate with the level blueprint, which in itself could cause a lot of problems when you then want to kind of like update a variable or, or something like that within the level blueprint that can change some of the logic. And it's kind of for this reason that in a lot of cases, people always recommend avoiding the level blueprint if possible, uh, because in a lot of cases, you can put exactly the same logic inside of a, an actor, uh, which we'll quickly go ahead and do now. Just, just so you've got an example. Um, I'll quickly create a brand new actor. Uh, example. Just like so. We'll open that up. Uh, so the first thing we do need to do is, is get a reference, which we can do quite easily uh, just by adding something onto here. So we'll call it actor ref. That's going to be a type actor. So, and then I want to set it as instance editable. And you'll notice that to begin with, the reference itself says none, and we can't change that. Uh, don't worry about that for now, we'll, we'll sort that in a second. Um, we're going to get the reference, and then we're going to do the destroy. We'll add a quick delay. And begin play. We'll set that to two seconds again. And we'll plug that straight in. Now, the thing about BP example, we do need to place that in the level. For it to exist so we're going to do that and with it selected in the details panel we can see that actor ref variable that we set up and it's still showing as none but if you notice it's no longer grayed out so because it is instance editable we can change that and it gives us access to the list of all the actors in the level so using the dropper tool we can do the, the rifle and i'm just going to quickly unhook it from the level blueprint so that way, whatever happens, it's from the actor. If we test that, we'll get exactly the same behavior. Now, with the actor, you have a lot more freedom in the sense that you can actually reference the BP example itself. So you could reference this specific blueprint, you can send messages to it, uh, call functions on it, all that type of stuff, which is significantly harder to do with the level blueprint. Now, in terms of my current understanding of things, I would still recommend to try and avoid using the level blueprint where possible. But I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a, share a little bit of a secret with you in terms of the level blueprint. And whilst it is a one way communication for the most part, it is actually possible to send a message to the level blueprint 
and have it cause some event there. Now, the method itself is a little bit, uh, I don't want to use the word convoluted, but um, if you're having to do it in a lot of, a lot, a lot of times, it's going to get very tedious, um, very messy. But you never know, there might be an edge case where being able to do this might actually be useful. So I'm still going to tell you anyway. So I'm actually going to use this BP example and I'm just going to remove that destroy actor. And go back to the level blueprint and I'm just going to delete everything that's in there for now. So in the level blueprint itself, if we click on class settings, we can actually see what the parent class is of this level blueprint and it's and it's a level script actor now with us knowing that we can actually get we, we can get it essentially now we can't do anything like get level or anything like that there's there's no way to get the script actor from it it's just not it's just not an option however using the get all actors of class now or get actor of class you can get the level script actors. So because you do have to, however, remember that if you're using something like level streaming, each level that you stream in will have their own level script actor. Um, so in those instances, you may need to use this one. But if you were to use uh, this one, like so, we still have a little bit of a problem in the sense that even though technically what's happened here is it's created a very specific level script actor just for this map, we still we can't cast to it in any sort of meaningful way to, to call any functions. So if we start a function in here, I wouldn't be able to get it to, to call. Now, this is where an interface itself would actually be quite handy. So if we come in and create a blueprint interface, uh, I'm just going to call this one a level script communicator. Why not? And I'm going to go ahead and call this, well, open it up, add a function in there. I'm going to call it uh, do something like so. So, with us having the level script actor, we can call the do something event dispatcher like that. And then in the first person uh, map level blueprint, under the class settings, we can add that interface that we've just created. So BPI level script communicator, and the interface shows up here, just like so. So as an example, I'm gonna go ahead and just set up the same thing that we had, where we destroy the actor like so. Uh, in the BP example, I'm just going to add the delay back in again just so it doesn't happen instantly. Like two seconds. So as a quick overview of what's going to happen, so we have the BP example actor, so this one here in the level. So on begin play, it's going to wait two seconds to then get the level script actor and call the do something a BPI event. That itself is then going to call the destroy actor inside the level blueprint. Let's go. So we test that. Wait two seconds. Boop. Just like that. So it's gone. So when we say that level blueprint is one way, for the most part it is, but there are some options available. Now, as I mentioned previously, also I do want to iterate this, I would still recommend using an actor where possible and try and avoid the level blueprint just because obviously the, the limitations the level blueprint does have. But there may be some scenarios where the level blueprint is the best option and you may still want to send a little message to it. Uh, so hopefully that will give you a, a little bit of an insight there. Now, one last little thing I do want to tell you about the level blueprint because this video is all about the secrets of the level blueprint after all. And that's that the level blueprint can actually hold components. Um, which, if you're looking at this menu, you'd be thinking, well, no, it doesn't. I cannot see anywhere to put a component. And 
you're right, the option to add it isn't there like you would with uh, the Active, for example. There's no components tab. And as far as I'm aware, yeah, under the window, just, there's, there's no option there to, to display it. It's just not something you can do, again, with the level blueprint. However, you can still do add component. Um, so I think the best one to add that would make most sense. So I've got a few options here. Don't think any of these are really particularly helpful. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly create a new actor component. I'm just going to call that one AC level BP exam. And in the level blueprint on begin play, we can call that add uh, underscore. Oh, I've forgotten the name already. Uh, <laughs> let's copy, uh, copy that. Add component. So that's so. And it's gonna if we leave the target to self, it will add that to itself essentially. So we could always store that as a ref if we wanted to. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna open up the active component, I'll begin play, I'm just gonna do a quick print string. This is the actor component on the level blueprint. There we go. So the only place we add that particular component is on here. And just to reinforce that, I'm going to add another one. I'm going to get the owner, which is the thing that owns the component. And I'm just going to print the name of it as well, just so we can see what that is. And again, on the level blueprint, I will actually go ahead and print the same thing on here, just so you can compare the names, so you know that they are the same thing. So, and we'll just connect that into there. So now if we do this quick test, as you saw on the print string there, so I'll quickly uh, open up the output log, so it'll be a bit easier to see. Just gotta find where it is. So here it is there. So we have the first person map, and then it adds the component, which does a print screen string, and then adds the, prints the name of its owner again. So yeah, so as you can see, there is a little bit more flexibility with the level blueprint than you would think, but obviously these are more of things you would do is for edge cases where you have to use a level blueprint and you still want those flexibilities there. Of course, after after you've watched this video, it might give you a ton of ideas of how you can use and abuse what I've just shown you. So if you do have any suggestions, by all means, do leave them in the comments. I absolutely love seeing people take something that's not supposed to be used in a particular way and they just find something so useful and, and brilliant. It's absolutely amazing. So if you do have any ideas, by all means, do share it. But no, um, in terms of this video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it here. Hopefully you found this video helpful, giving you a bit of an insight in terms of the level blueprint. Again, do try and avoid it where possible. Obviously just using an actor tends to be the better option. Um, but hopefully you've learned a few of the additional techniques you could potentially use if the level blueprint is the only option that you have. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to leave a like. See ya. I'm going to say take care. Bye.